Welcome back to The Current. I'm your co-host, Dallas Dakota. And I'm your other co-host, Spencer Jones. Today, we will be chatting with producer Willie Kuttner, who is currently working on the film One True Loves, which is being filmed right here in Wilmington. And later, we'll be playing a fun holiday-themed Jeopardy to put our Christmas knowledge to the test. Cape Fear, Leaf, and Bloom are hosting a bi-weekly pop-up shop with over 30 local vendors bringing great sales on plants, art, food, and more. This event is held every other Saturday at 410 Carolina Beach Road from noon to 4. Come out and support local businesses and check out their Facebook page for more information. As the end of the semester approaches, we're reaching a time to say goodbye to all of our newest graduates. UNC Wilmington will be hosting an in-person commencement for all fall 2021 graduates on December 11th in Trask Coliseum. COVID-19 protocols will remain in effect for the event and face coverings will be required. Each graduate will receive five guest passes to attend commencement, and UNCW will also offer a live stream for the event for those who are unable to attend in person. Find the link to the live stream on UNCW's main website. The Office of Student Leadership and Engagement is holding Hawks Harvest Food Pantry. This local food pantry serves as a great way to provide resources to students and community members who are struggling to find meals. Donations to Hawks Harvest will take place on December 9th from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. in the Fisher Student Center. No registration is necessary, and check out the Office of Student Leadership and Engagement's website to find out more about what items they will accept. And need a little help getting into the Christmas spirit this holiday season? Well, throughout the whole month of December, Airly Gardens is hosting their beloved Enchanted Airly event. Stroll through and enjoy millions of festive lights, holiday flowers, and musical entertainment and breathtaking sights. Online tickets must be purchased in advance. Check out their website and social media for the latest updates. Now let's head over to Nick to see what One True Love's producer, Willie Kuttner, has to share. Ladies and gents, I'm joined here today with producer, Mr. Willie Kuttner. Willie, again, thank you so much for joining us for a very brief interview, really quick. How are you doing this morning, sir? I am good. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Um, Willie, if you don't mind, is it possible, would you just take us students here at UNCW through milestones in your life that got you to where you are today? as a producer, as one who is involved in the world of film and entertainment and that whole realm? Sure. Um, I started off in the music end of the business. I was playing uh, piano and keyboard. So I was kind of you know, doing that, starting off in classical and then kind of learning a little bit of rock and roll and started you know, writing songs and uh, you know, working in New York and then eventually in LA, uh, writing music for bands and then ultimately uh, writing scores for films, which that was kind of my start in the industry, meeting a lot of wonderful creative people out here um, who were nice to a to a, a kid just out of Berkeley and um, started that way. But ultimately, as I um, was living in Los Angeles, I wanted to learn more about the business from the film side. So I started taking kind of odd jobs, um, whether it be a production assistant or working in costume or working as a grip, you know, um, you know, PA to learn enough about the business to, to be dangerous, <laughs> to understand the business itself and under, and did that and ultimately transitioned into, um, uh, managing production, managing commercials, low budget films, and eventually, you know, into the studio system. Mm. So that milestone, I was very lucky to, to meet a lot of people, which I think is really important, is you know talking to people. You know, obviously relationships are very important in our business. So um, a lot of people uh, were helpful in kind of guiding me towards my milestones of saying, "Hey, listen, hey, it would be good to maybe produce or to develop material." Uh, you know, during the time period. So that was kind of my milestones until eventually I was doing low budget films and studio films and then working with um, uh, my own company, developing material for features and television. Mm, that's incredible. UNC Wilmington, we are known for, at least one of our many studies here at the university, we're known for 
film studies as well as communication studies. And many of our students, after graduation, they end up moving on towards in some way, shape, or form being involved in the media, the film, the television, the entertainment industry as a whole. Uh, more often than not, we're told from faculty as well as friends, it's really about the connections that you make. Would you say that's true? I think that's a, certainly a big part of it. I think it's important. If you're a writer, you should write. If you're a director, you should direct. If you're an actor, you should act. That's so important because ultimately it's your material and your voice that people hear. Um, part of that is meeting people. It's great once you get an agent or a manager and they're really helpful in getting you into rooms to meet people, whether they be casting directors or producers or directors. However, it's you who's really driving your career and ultimately your relationships, you know, talking to a casting director, talking to a producer, talking to a director are important because those people know you as a human being and know your voice. Mm -hmm. So relationships are, are very important. Gotcha. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to be um, an extra in One True Love's most recently, roughly about a month ago now. And it was an honor, it was a privilege. It was, it's incredible to see all the moving parts and pieces that go on as well as meeting with the director, Andy Fickman, during a seminar that he had, I believe about two months ago now. We understand that there was a little bit of, a, maybe you might say a fiasco involved with uh, finding shooting locations, and ultimately end, it ended up being here in Wilmington, North Carolina. When issues like that occur, is that, is that ever a trouble on your end? Does that ever affect you at all in, in terms of signing paperwork, in terms of, in terms of finding personnel to get involved? Is that ever an issue? Uh, certainly that is. Um, you know, for One True Loves, we had started, we were going to shoot in Massachusetts uh, as the book is set there. Um, however, as we went there to, to do it, there was a lot of um, union problems going on at the time. And obviously that raised, you, when you have a lot of union, it, it raises budgets and and creates time, sometimes some time issues. So we then quickly pivoted and tried to find somewhere else. Um, we were gonna go to Georgia, but Georgia was at that time filled up with the production and we were a little concerned, um, you know, at the time with all, with all that was going on down there. Uh, and lucky enough, we were then, um, we pivoted to, um, to North Carolina mm. and, um, and the Wilmington area, Southport, Wilmington, that, that whole area. Also a big part of what True Loves was the lighthouses, mm. uh, which is a big part of the book. So lighthouses were really important and really only three places that they had them was Massachusetts, North Carolina, and South Carolina. So it was important to us to have that feel of the lighthouse, which of course we ended up at Bodie, which is lovely and beautiful um, that we shot up there. So um, pivoting, it's not, you usually have the cast, that doesn't affect them, it doesn't affect the, the producers, directors, writers, et cetera. Where it does um, affect is suddenly where you're getting your crew. Because ultimately, if you're shooting in North Carolina, you want to get people from North Carolina uh, because obviously it's easier and, you know, it helps your, your tax, you know, financing. And also you want the community to grow with you. It's really important. Um, but when you do it at the last minute, as it is in Wilmington, it's very, very busy right now, which is fabulous because it is a fabulous place to shoot. So suddenly not everyone is available. So you then have to bring people in from South Carolina or Atlanta or wherever, which you would rather not do because you want to have people work out of Wilmington or North Carolina. Right, so right. it does affect it that way. Mm. Um, if you don't mind, Willie, could you just take us through the Cliff Notes version of how a film goes from a book to, to an actual movie? If you could just walk us through those steps really quick. Sure. The first thing uh, from a book standpoint is a producer or somebody will get the rights to that book so they are allowed to make it into a movie whether it's an, an option in the book so as i did in this particular case i optioned the book then you get together with the writers and you write the screenplay for that book um in this particular case it was taylor and alex who did it who was the writers of the book which is lovely for us in a lot of cases there are other writers the book writer won't write the screenplay it's a different medium um, so that would be the second step. 
from there, once we have the script that we enjoy and like, we think we can sell, then we go, I, we go to a director, okay, um, for his interest. In this particular case, we went to Andy, couldn't have been a, a better choice. Uh, and um, we work with Andy, with the director, to make the script better in the sense of having his vision as a director, because as, a, as, as you know, the director is kind of the, the leader of the set on the film, and ultimately it's his voice. He knows what he wants to see with, of course, the, the writers and the producers to make the film as best as it could be. Mm. Once we have the director and we're happy with the script, then we go to a casting director. In this particular case, the amazing Sarah Finn. And Sarah uh, will then work with us to say, listen, I think these actors would be fabulous for um, Jesse, you know, and Sam and Emma. And together, all of us, we then begin to put together the cast for the movie, okay? Mm -hmm. um, once we have the cast, okay, in that meanwhile, because it's never one at a time, we begin to look at locations, where we're thinking of shooting it, okay? Um, and who we think can shoot it. The cinematographer, the DP, um, you know, who, Greg Gardner, who was amazing. Uh, we begin to put him together and a production designer, you know, and the editor, the key people in the film that we know are going to make the film with us once we pick our locations, mm. um, we crew we crew up the main crew, and then ultimately, once we pick the location, like we did North Carolina, then we need to go down there to location scout and see which places in Wilmington will match for us mm. best the scenes in the movie. Once we scout those locations and we pick those locations, we're off and running, mm. and then. We bring the crew into Wilmington with, you know, the director and producers, whatever, to begin to put together and get ready the shoot for the movie, which we did just five weeks ago. Mm. It's quite the process. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, sir. I was just going to say it's quite the process. It's interesting to see all the moving parts and pieces and cogs in the wheel that are all going at the exact same time. Yeah, there are many things because ultimately you're trying to crew up and obviously you during that time are making your deals with the financing, um, whether it's with a studio, whether it's with a streamer or whether it's an independent financier. And ultimately you're working that well, you're working the creative side because ultimately they both have to come together at a certain date that you pick down the road. Right, right. Willie, do you have any last bit of advice for any of our college students here, those that are involved in the communication studies department or the film studies department? Any uh, last impressions that maybe you wish someone told you when you were in your early to mid-20s? Anything along those lines? You know, I, I think the most important thing is to, you know, go with your gut and your instinct. If you love what you do and, and, and think you have a passion for it, go for it. There's no one that can stop you. Ultimately, mm -hmm. I think... We all have our voices, whether you're a cinematographer, whether you're a writer, whether you're a director, an actor. Um, uh, keep on studying your craft, which is really important. And as I said kind of in the beginning is, if you're an actor, keep acting. The more that you do it, the more you're comfortable with it, and the more other people see how comfortable you are with it. Mm -hmm. And try to create little things for yourself. Um, I think in today's, um, where everything is Zoom or computer, it's a little bit easier to be able to maybe, and what once you do is craft different things. If you're an actor, do a couple scenes, put it on tape, you know, work with, you know, people in your class who are director, your director, direct a couple things, put it on wherever you can, because for people to see you and what you do is the most important thing. Mm. Mm, that's incredible. Willie, thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for this opportunity. We here at UNCW are so honored to be able to speak with someone who was involved with One True Loves, and we cannot thank you enough. Seriously, thank you for oh, the time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for being involved and being part of One True Loves. Um, and uh, the school is incredible, and thank you so much. You have a lovely day. Thank you so much. You do the same, sir. We'll ho hope to talk to you soon. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks again, Willie and Nick. 
Now let's wrap up this current season with holiday cheer. Thanks guys. Ladies and gents, you already know me. I'm your host, Nicholas Rafe. This is the current's first ever episode of Christmas Jeopardy. I'm joined today with Dallas, Spencer, and Camden. Dallas, where are you visiting us from? I'm coming at you from Raleigh, North Carolina. Awesome. Spencer, where are you coming in from, man? I'm from Greenville, North Carolina. Last but not least, Camden, where are you visiting us from? I'm here from Danville, Virginia. Awesome. Contestants, welcome. Let's get started. Spencer won the coin toss, so Spencer, you take the lead on this board here. Let me get Christmas stories for 400, please. In Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol, Mr. Scrooge's first name is this. Okay, Spencer busted first with Ebenezer, Camden wrote in Carl, and Dallas wrote in Tim. The correct answer is, who is Ebenezer? Spencer won those points that round. Spencer, you also get to choose the next, yeah. um, the next topic with uh, the points. So okay. go ahead, Spencer. Go Let's ahead go Christmas songs for 300, please. Christmas songs for 300. No crocodiles or rhinoceroses. I only want... <laughs> Excuse me for laughing. I've never heard of this song before. Sorry. I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Hippopotamus is the correct answer. Spencer, I believe you got it first, though. Mm-hmm. So Spencer does get those points, ladies and gents. Go ahead and choose our next question Let's on the Chris- board, please. Let's go Christmas movies for 200, please. Christmas movies 200. The movie with a young boy trying to escape robbers. Oh, this is a Christmas classic. Dallas busted first with Home Alone. Oh. Camden, we're still waiting on you. Uh. A Christmas story. Uh. Oh, I'm oh. sorry, Camden. Dallas, you got the points for that one. Go ahead and choose no. our next oh, topic. Oh, please. Joy. Let me do Christmas songs for 200. Christmas songs for 200. This is given on the first day of Christmas in the 12 Days of Christmas song. I'm blanking. This is a. <laughs> I, even, I even did an illustration. <laughs> it's a partridge. I'm not confident. It's a Spencer bird. Spencer did turtle. write it first. A partridge. <laughs> 12 turtle In a pear tree. It's We're going to give points to Spencer on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spencer, you can go ahead and choose. I should just choose for the rest of the thing. Huh? Oh, whoa, whoa. He's getting a little <laughs> arrogant. Camden and Dallas, how y'all feel about that? It's a not bit good, much. Not good, not mm-hmm. good. Go ahead, Spencer. It's on you. Let's go Chris and it's random for 300. Christmas randos, 300. 300. The Christmas song was actually written for Thanksgiving. This Christmas song was actually written for Thanksgiving. I have no idea what this is. Spencer says joy to the world. Camden, question mark. (laughs) Dallas, what do you have for us? I don't know. Last Christmas, the correct answer is... What is Jingle Bells? What is Jingle Bells is the correct answer. No one gets points for that one. I'm going to go ahead and choose one. Let's go for Christmas traditions for 500, ladies and gents. Famous Christmas plant that gets hung above heads. (gasps) Dallas says mistletoe. (laughs) I was blanking on that. (laughs) Mistletoe. I mean, Spencer's not wrong, but... Mistletoe. Okay, Dallas, you want to go ahead and got those points for that one. <laughs> what is a mistletoe? Dallas, what would you like? All right, let's do Christmas movies for 400. Christmas movies, 400. Miracle on 34th Street centers on this department store. Oh, that was close. I actually think Camden got... Dallas says... Wait up, I got... Macy's. I got the whole answer, though. It's Macy's and Gimbel's. Oh, wow. I'll give it we, to we Candy because I'm a good sport. It says what is Macy's. <laughs> it does say what is Macy's. <laughs> Camden got those money. points. Camden, you can go ahead and All right, let's take your pick. See. Let's do Christmas random for 500. Christmas random for 500. His drink is considered the drink of Christmas. Spencer says eggnog. His drink is. His drink. It's Santa. (laughs) And then we have hot chocolate. What is the answer, please, on the board? I already know this question. (laughs) What is eggnog? Yeah, I was confused by the wording. I think that was a typo. Sorry about that, ladies and gents. I think you're supposed to say this drink is considered, (laughs) not his drink. Mike's. That's very simple. Spencer, you can go ahead and choose the next question. Let's go Christmas trivia for 400. 
Trivia for 400. This U.S. state was the first to officially recognize Christmas as a holiday. Spencer says Hawaii. Camden and Dallas. Dallas says Delaware. Camden says Tennessee. Tennessee. What is the correct answer? What is Alabama? Ooh. Bonus points for the year. Anyone have any idea? I have oh no goodness. idea. So let's just move on. To the next. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and choose. Let's choose Christmas songs for 900. This is a make or break kind of a question right here. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> Spencer says la la la. Camden says joy to the world. Dallas says deck the halls. What is the correct answer? Oh. What is deck the halls? 900 points goes to Dallas. Ladies and gents, right now we have Dallas taking the lead. 1600. Spencer's mm. followed closely behind with 1400. Camden, it's all right. You can catch up. <laughs> We got plenty of time left. All we got right. another roughly five minutes left on the clock. Dallas, go ahead and Every choose the right. next question for us. Let's go Christmas movies for 500. Christmas movies 500. Cindy Lou Who is from this Christmas movie. Camden says the Grinch. 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 The Grinch is the correct answer. Camden got those points. Catching up. Woo. Little by little. Camden, what would you like to see? All right, let's do... Christmas Trivia 300. Christmas Trivia 300. Where people use the greeting, Mele Kalikimaka. Ooh, that's, I haven't heard that one in a while. Camden says Hawaii. <laughs> Dallas says question mark. <laughs> Spencer says another question mark. What is the <laughs> correct answer? What is Hawaii? All right. Camden, you're catching up very quickly. What would you like to see up here on the board? All righty. Let's do Christmas Random for 600. Christmas Random 600. Candy canes originated in what country? Excuse the typo, ladies and gents. We're on a very tight budget here. Camden says USA. Spencer says Sweden. Dallas says England. What is the correct answer? What is Germany? What is Germany? No one gets any points for that one. No. All right. Let's go Christmas trivia for 500. How to say Merry Christmas in Spanish. I don't know how to spell it, but I can say it. We have Feliz Navidad. I mean, I, 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 I mean Cam, you got it right. So let's go with Cam. I didn't spell Cam, it right, but <laughs> I knew how to say it. There's an F and an N. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Camden, what would you like to see on the board? Let's do Christmas Traditions 200. Christmas Traditions 200. A house that is edible. Some people like to say eatable. Those people are wrong. Camden says gingerbread. Dallas says gingerbread. Spencer says gingerbread. Camden got it. There we go. Camden, you're storming the lead right now. Yes. All right. What would you like to see up here on the board? Let's do Christmas Traditions 400. Christmas Traditions for 400. Famous type of cake made on Christmas. What cake is that going to be? Spencer says fruitcake. Fruitcake from Camden. Chocolate from Dallas. What is the correct answer? What is a fruitcake? All right. Spencer got those points there. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Spencer, what would you like to see there, good sir? I want to see Christmas stories for 700. Christmas stories, 700. Mm -hmm. According to It's a Wonderful Life, this happens every time a bell rings. An angel, an angel gets, gets wings. wings. An angel does something. An angel gets wings. Gets wings. Camden got those points. Yes. Dallas, you were so close, right behind her. Camden, you're storming the lead right now with 2,600 points. We've got just over a minute left remaining in the game. Camden, what would you like to see? Let's do Christmas Trivia 600. Christmas Trivia for 600. A popular children's cookie introduced as a Christmas ornament in 1902. Camden says sugar cookie. Dallas says gingerbread man. Spencer, <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> cookie monster. What are animal crackers? Oh, All right, no one got any that. points for that one. That was, that was very challenging. I wouldn't guess that. Let's do Christmas trivia for 100 points. 
day of the week Christmas falls on in 2021. We have Thursday, the 25th, and Saturday. What is the correct answer? What is Saturday? Dang. Dallas, all right. What would you like to see up here on the board, Dallas? I'm thinking Christmas movies, 800. Christmas Ooh. movies for 800. In Polar Express, only these people can hear the bells ring. Camden says, who believes? Who believes? Those who believe, what does Spencer say? Believe in children. Believing children. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are true believers or those who truly believe? Camden got it first. You got those points, Camden? We've got 30 seconds remaining on the clock. Camden is in the lead with 3,400 points. Spencer and Dallas, you guys are just about tied. Camden, what would you like to see? Let's do Christmas Traditions 300 to keep it safe for me. Okay, Christmas Traditions 300. Kids leave this meal out for Santa on Christmas Eve. Dallas says cookies. Cookies and milk. And cookies and milk. What is the correct answer? What are milk and cookies? Oh, I want to give it to Dallas so bad. Come on, come on. Yeah, why not? We'll give the points to Dallas. <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. Dallas, what would you like to see up here on the board? Let me get Christmas songs for 500. Christmas songs for 500. And heaven and nature sing. What is this song? Dallas is joy to the world. Joy to the world. Noel, what is the correct answer? What is joy to the world? Mm. All right, ladies and gents, we're going to have to ask one more Team question up. from Dallas. Dallas did get those points, by the way. One more question to Dallas. Wow, this more. is the make or break. Dallas, do you want to go for one of the thousand points? You could beat Camden. Let's go Christmas random 1,000. Christmas random for 1,000. Let's oh, do it. Oh, gosh. A reindeer is also known as this in North America. That's a very good question. Spencer says deer. Dallas and Camden are taking their time. Dallas says caribou. Camden, what do you say? <laughs> Christmas deer. <laughs> what is the correct answer? What is caribou? Ooh. Oh my goodness, Dallas. Break it in the points. That concludes. This is going to be our conclusion. Dallas, a nice job for the win. You win bragging rights it. and some leftover Halloween candy. Oh, I love it. So there you go, man. <laughs> Ladies and gents, this has been the current's very first episode of Christmas Jeopardy. Thank you so much for joining us. We wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We'll see you soon, folks.